you can see what I'm doing. All this that's kind of stretched out of shape, rather than try to deal with it and to get it to lay flat, I'm just going to trim it away and neaten up this hole, meaning I'm going to try to get it flat as possible. So we have some pieces of foam that are already kind of, that I stuck in here, this beauty. I'm just going to trim that up a little bit. doesn't have to be an exact science. Remember, ladies, this is probably not going to fix this couch perfect. There's probably no way that we can make this totally undetectable. I'll be curious to see exactly myself how good we can make this go. All this flap laid down. This is a piece where the dog has kind of chewed this whole side apart. So there's nothing for it to sew to, catch to. I'm just going to glue it right back to the foam. So that's going to give me something solid there. Now there's dog marks out of this foam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and fill these little gaps up so I don't have lows. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. That's why I needed the solid material versus that. All right, let's see. I need my other tub here. Okay, so um, I think I'm just going to lay this down. I'm just going to glue back any loose pieces that I can and get it. See how quickly it starts to tack up immediately. It's hard to get it off my fingers and my tools this fuzzy stuff. Alright, let me just make me a little bed here to lay this stuff in and I'm going to stick some Dacron in that. So I'm sticking down any of my material that I'm filling it with so it doesn't move around because it's not going to be stable if it's just loose under there. Let's get all the edges stuck. And have a little piece sticking out. We'll trim this mess up. I know you guys are doubting how this is going to look and believe me I doubt it too sometimes mm -hmm. but we're going to make it look good. Have faith, have faith. And you can rub this and smooth this down and get this start to look pretty darn good really quickly. It doesn't move the material around if you keep your fingers nice and wet. Un unless you just put a little more pressure and you want to move it. So I feathered it back using this technique a little bit. So there's not so much to sand and that's the important thing. You don't want so much to sand and you don't want to see that you've got marks in it and so on. I'm going to go back on that arm and do that in just a minute because it has so much more material in it. I'll let it harden up a little more. Uh, our friend Tina Barrow is asking how hard will this get? Tina, it, um, it is, it's an acrylic, so it gets fairly stiff but not hard. Let's just say it gets firm but not hard. You know, you, it's the more material that you apply, obviously, is the harder it's going to get. Keep on adding this material till we build up a layer that's level to the old part of the seat here. And this new material that we're putting on is called Bond and Flex. And Bond and Flex is exactly what it sounds like. It's a bond that flexes over these bridging, over these huge areas. Thing on here to start bonding down this material and give us something to glue to. Whether that be the leather, the Dacron, whatever we got, we're going to use. And use it to hold it together. So once this will be a couple day process for us to get this thing back in order but once we get it all on here then we're going to sand it and sm sand it smooth. Sand it, build it up, sand it and, until we get it. So we've gone in, filled it up, got everything tucked back in. It's still a little bit pliable and soft so it's, it, uh, it will sand very easily even after it has cured out, but this is going to take several days to cure. It's really too early to paint it, but I'm painting it anyway because I want to show you. And it will still continue to harden and cure, but this has a lot of material built up here. So you can see this is sandable. After I put on the Bond and Flex, I used my glove 
and I smoothed it. And the reason I do all that is so I don't have so much to sand. And I also want to integrate back into the areas that are not being repaired. So I dampen my glove by just dipping it in a little water. I put that Bond & Flex on. I let it set up for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, come back. And just kind of smoothed it and finessed it with my glove and just kind of pushed it into, the feathered it into the other areas. So that layer here is very thin and hopefully it's going to be less noticeable when we paint it. So uh, again, I'm going to create some difference, some variations in this color, and I'm going to do that by just kind of So I'm using truffle. Uh, again, I've explained, if you're just jumping onto this live, that we're going to try to put in a little bit of a red undertone here, and I'm using Americana that is a bright red, but I'm just dabbing my brush in there to pull in some of the undertones that this had in the original modeled finish of the leather. So let's get this first coat on, and then we'll go back and see what we got. So again, I'm going to try to feather in this here so I don't have to paint this whole front of the couch. Less is more in this situation. The less I paint, the more this will conceal into the original leather. So that's what I'm trying to do. Now, I'm going to put a little red in this, just like I did over there. Just tap it in, just to kind of bring it in to reality. A lot, just a tiny bit. But I am going to do the whole seat here, not just this area. And then use my tree applicator to just kind of go in there and create a little bit of a faux texture. Even though it'll go out smooth. Still want to put that in there. Alright, so some areas that he kind of chewed a little but didn't really tear. It's a she, sorry. She tear. <laughs> right down the side here was all another area that we worked extensively on to rebuild. It was the gaping open yeah, pretty much was a whole, whole missing side there. And just kind of stipple and make sure you get the repair painted well. And there we go. Now I'm going to keep painting this cushion and see if I can get, kind of give them the overall feeling of what it's going to look like finished. She scratched it up back in here pretty good, too. I'm just pushing my brush right under the cushion as much as possible. Truffle's a pretty decent blend to this. Yeah, I think that was Mm-hmm, it is. It's kind of... Kind of a little bit tan on it. Yep, kind of matching it pretty good. So, again, just going to keep on rolling with it here. I don't want to paint over the pretty nail heads and all of that. I'm just going to leave them again as much as of the original as I can. So let's continue this and put a little red in it, and then we'll stipple the whole thing to kind of keep the character of it. Jessica's on and watching. Well, hey, Jessica. What do you think? So excited. Random. I'm just putting the red in here at random. So you don't want to create a pattern. You want to create a random pattern. I got a little pattern in there I don't like. So this little modeling technique actually will help us to disguise the repair even more. So if it were solid painted, it'll hide it, but it's not as good as it would if we modeled it up a little. So let's do that. 